خصك الرحمن بالفضل والتجان الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We're coming to you live tonight from not only coming to you live from our television channel here on Guidance TV. At the same time, simultaneously, we are attempting to mix two things together, which is, uh, I won't say it's difficult, but, uh, uh, but it is. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. For those folks who can, uh, let me see if I can set this up properly. I'm setting it up right now to, there we go. They can hear me, all right, and I left the video effects off of that. There we go, so that they will be able to hear me in the chat room. Now, those of you who are already in the chat room, I see some of you already are in there. You're ready to go, mashallah, I'm happy for you. I just want to tell you that uh, you want to be sure that you turn off the monitor that's inside the chat room now because otherwise you're going to hear it twice. At the same time, simultaneously, I can hear it. Attempting to mix two things together is, uh, I won't say it's difficult, but, uh, but it's difficult. Uh, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me turn that off. Now, those of you who are listening in the chat room right now, mashallah, we're happy to have you with us tonight. Those of you who want to call in on the phone, you're also welcome. We'll put the number up just in a few minutes. But for right now, we wanted to set the, the tone for the way that we're going to deal with this and then also the subject that we'll be dealing with. Let's go to the subject first. We want to talk about depression. What is depression? How do we understand it? in Islam, and then what would be the... Now, is it depression, or is it obsession, or is it possession? Again, depression, possession, obsession. And what are we talking about? In Islam, obviously, we know that there people have ups and downs in their level of faith. And when the faith is high and you're feeling very close to Almighty God, and we even use that term, you're feeling high, you're feeling good. At the same time, we know that there are times when a person's faith or their iman drops and they feel low. And oftentimes we feel depressed because we remember those good feelings and we'd like to have it again. So there, that could be a depression. But then there's something else that's uh, much more in line with the way people understand depression today. And that is when someone is really, really down, and we're talking about no matter what anybody says, they have a very negative attitude or they don't even want to speak at all. They're moping around, head hanging down, doesn't matter what anybody does or says, they just don't seem to come out of it. In Islam, we know that there is something called jinn possession. And it refers to the jinn or the shayateen, the devils, who are able to influence a person so much so that they're almost like they are possessed. And that's the possession we're talking about. Thirdly, there is obsession. When a person becomes obsessed with something to the extent that they, it brings them down, they're so obsessed with something that they can't focus on anything else. If our obsession is even our religion, it might be too much because maybe we're going too strong or too long into the wrong way. But we'll talk about that more when we come back to the, uh, the subject itself. Now I want to talk about the mechanics of how we're going to operate tonight. Okay, first of all, you're watching us on TV. So either you're watching us on your phone, your iPad, your tablet, or you're watching us on the satellite, on Guidus TV satellite, or you're watching us on one of the antennas that are scattered around the United States in here in, of course, Ohio, New York, West Coast in Los Angeles, Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and if you're on any of those antennas, uh, that's fine too. 
Also, of course, the internet itself. If you're watching us on the internet right now, or if you're in the chat room, you're in the internet, and then you're watching us there as well. So those are some of the different ways. And let me see who's in the chat room right now. Other than myself, we have Chantel, Aisha, Muhammad, and Musa. Mashallah, that's nice. That's very nice. And then we can find out who are, where are these people at. Uh, I'm in the United States. No clue where Chantel is. United States for Aisha and no clue for Muhammad. And the United Kingdom for Musa, mashallah. Okay, now we have a, an idea where everybody's from. Let's talk about how the chat room works. The chat room works like this. Somebody comes into the room and it says, welcome to the chat. And then we say, welcome back. I misspelled it, didn't I? <laughs> welcome to our website, dedicated to presenting true Islam in simple English. There we go. That's our motto for that website, that we're dedicated to presenting true Islam in simple English. It's really the motto for everything that we do under the banner of Share Islam. But we have rules when somebody goes to the website, and uh, I can show you that just here in a second. We'll open up another one. I, I'm not going to actually go in on it, but, but I'll put it up here so you can see it. This is Chad Islam. Takes us to the website. And when you come to it, there you go. This is what you will see. You can sign in as a guest, uh, male or female. You can put that, or secret. You can keep it a secret. And whether you want to be remembered, if you want to log in. Uh, and then over on the side, you can also register if you like. It's very simple. This is the easiest registration on the Internet. You make up a username, a password, retype your password, give us your email, your location, just say the country you're in or a state or whatever, then your birthday. That's so in case you lose your password or something, we can send that to you. And then again, whether you're male, female, or secret, then register. Once you do that, you're done. It's that simple. You're not going to get a bunch of spam emails. You're not going to get anything to take you away from Dean. You're not going to get any bad advertising or anything like that. It's just real simple. Got it? So now that you understand what I just told you, I want you to be able to go there anytime. And, but now there's some rules that are involved here. Yeah. And let's take a look at the rules. Here's the rules. Hmm, didn't come up. Oh, because I didn't check in. All right, let's... No, there they come. Here come the rules. This is for monitors. Send all emails to the monitor board, user agreement. Okay, it tells you here that we're dedicated to presenting the correct message of Islam based on Quran and Sunnah, etc. Then it goes on to tell you that you're agreeing to these following rules. These rules and regulations that we set forth are based on what our scholars have asked us to do to protect ourselves against people coming in and wasting our time or taking people away from Islam or causing debates and problems that we don't really, we're not really geared for, okay? So any rule, anybody violates the rules, is a, is, as a guest, they are subject to warning and then possible elimination from the site. Let me highlight that so you can just see it. Let me just highlight the whole paragraph here and I'll read it again. Violation of any rule or rules will subject a guest to the warnings and possible elimination from the site. And when you ignore the advice of our instructors or monitors, then this could result in limiting or eliminating you completely from the site. Okay? So you need to know that. And then the, you read the rules. Take your time. Go through there and find out. It doesn't take that long to go through and understand what it is you're getting into. Because if you don't, you could get banned. It's as uh, simple as that. Okay? Now, let's go back and take a look at what we got. Now, whenever you go in and out, you may have to sign up again. Yep. And that's the case here, isn't it? So we'll just exit that one and I'm back over here as me 
Um, you know, we've got added some folks on here. We have Abdul Wadud. Doesn't tell us where he is. We've got Dafi or Dafi, Dafi in Indonesia. Yeah, welcome in Indonesia, by the way. Let me see if I can spell welcome a little bit better. All right, I'm just showing you how this works. And that little sound, if you don't want the sound, there's some little tools up here you can hook up to and eliminate those sounds and things going on. See right there where it says turn off the sounds? Okay, but I'm going to leave it on so we'll hear whenever somebody wants to ask a question or something from there. Now, now that you understand the chat room, the, the other thing that we have across the top it says, Islam, Allah, Quran, Muhammad, question, links, tips, and rules. Got it? Now, what that does, basically, it, it's another way to say this, share Islam. Share Islam is our website that maintains our other websites. That's cool. Watch this. This is number one. What is Islam? Obviously, if you're checking out Islam, that'd be the first place to start. What is Islam? The focus in Islam is on God. So who is God? Is it Allah? Let's take a look at that. All right. Then Allah's Quran. You want to find out about the Quran because that's his actual speech to us. That's what Muslims believe. How did we get it? We got it from Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessing be upon him. So let's find out about him. Who is he? What is he? What people said about him? Then what about Islam's women? That's the biggest question people ask us. What about the women and blah, 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 and the treatment and so and such? Okay, okay, okay. We got it there for you. Science and Islam, a lot of our Muslim youth especially, they're real impressed when they find out that Islam is having a lot of the scientific things long before people in the West even thought about it. For instance, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, the first flight, man in flight, was not here in Ohio. And it wasn't in Germany. The first man in flight was over 800 and, I think, 850 years ago in Spain. And he got hurt really bad when he landed. And he didn't try it again. But he actually flew. And that's the reference that you see up there. See that thing kind of looks like bird wings? Well, that and the thing that you see right underneath it, that's an astrolabe invented in both cases by Muslims, okay? And that's some of the science that these, but I didn't mean to get that far off on it. Let's go to jihad. What is jihad? Is it all about spreading your religion with a sword? You might be real surprised to go on here and find out about some of these groups today and how they're absolutely, not only are they wrong, they're the opposite of Islam. Wow. Bible. Muslims are entitled to talk about the Bible not from the standpoint of trying to put it down, trying to insult it, trying to make it look shabby, but rather to find the things that agree with the last testament. Because as Muslims, we believe in the first testaments coming. You might call them the old testaments. Then the testaments that came along with Jesus and so on. And then the last and final testament, the last of the speeches, the last of the recitations coming from God. He did communicate with, as we know, more than 124,000 prophets. And he brought always the same message, worship God alone without partners, and so on. All right, let's go to the last one here. And we've got questions and answers. And that's what you're watching right now, isn't it? These are the answers to the questions you have from that standpoint. Okay, so there you go. Questions and answers, Bible Islam, about jihad, science Islam, Islam's women, prophet of Islam, Allah's Quran, God Allah, what's Islam? And there you go. That's all part of sure Islam. Look across the top and you see more goodies up there that you could, like, for instance, you want to explore? Look at some of the things you can explore on here. That's even more, isn't it? And ask Islam, of course, you're watching us. Just ask Islam is what you're watching right now. And there it is. Ta-da! MashaAllah. And ordinarily, we have a scholar online with us tonight. Sheikh Ahmed is very busy with some of his classes that he's teaching. And 
So therefore, we're going to do it a little different way tonight. What we're going to do is use another one of our websites. I, I like this one. Just ask Islam, I'm going to put it up there. Then I'm going to add another website up here called Search for Islam. Dot com. Search for Islam. Dot com. Now, watch closely. I want, to see, I want you to see this. Watch close. Watch your full screen now. I'm going to make you go full screen for you. Take a look. Watch. Look at the eyeballs. Hey, it's Shake Google. <laughs> Abdullah. Now, let's, let's do our topic. Tonight we're talking about depression, okay? That's our subject. The other thing that we were talking about is possession. Let's put those two words together and let's see what it tells us. Ah, the first thing it tells us about falling into sin. Then it's a video on here to help us look for the logic of gin possession or psychological disorders, and then the way to happiness. But let's take number two. Now, I'm going to make this big on my screen so you can watch this video just for a couple minutes to get the feel for it, okay? This, by the way, these are, this is another one of our websites called Tube Islam or Islam YouTube if you want to, you can call it that either way. To find out more about this website, you come here on your own time and view it and check it out and you'll see a lot more stuff over here. Now there's the, the um, magnifying glass and it means to search. So let's put that on here, possession. See what we find out. Ya Hamil al Quran, Qad Khassak al Rahman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon all of you. One of the aims of Islam is to create a society that peacefully coexists with one another. It is my firm belief that ignorance breeds fear. And if we want to get rid of ignorance, we have to educate. I appreciate what Guidance TV is doing, educating our public in order to be better informed so that we're not afraid of one another, so that we can all peacefully coexist. Get guided with Guidance TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Guidance TV is doing amazing work and it needs your support. Running a satellite channel, running a TV station is not cheap. It takes money, it takes time, it takes commitment, and it is absolutely an obligation for you, all of you, to donate generously to help this amazing project. And don't forget, get guided with Guidance TV. Get guided with Guidance TV. <laughs> Treatment of genie possession, okay, gene possession in psychology, what is Rukia, and the world of the jinn, spirit possession, Dr. Bilal Phillips, and let's start with this one right here. I want you to listen carefully now. We're not going to play the whole thing, obviously, but this will give you some ideas. I'm going to make a big screen for you. Inshallah. I think I will. There we go. Now it's on full screen. Let's 
seems like this is taking a little time. I think our internet might be a little slow tonight. No, we can't do that because this is going to take all night. If you have uh, if you have fast internet, you'll enjoy it. But uh, we've got a lot of things pulling on our internet tonight. But this is where you will find that there are actually four videos. Number one, it doesn't have a number on it. Number two, number three, number four. You can take your time, go through, and find out more about that subject. All right, and that's the point behind what we're doing right now is to show you how to find what you need when you need it. Watch this. We're going to go back now, and we're going to take out the word possession, and then just depression. This takes us to an article that was put up four days ago, how Islam deals with depression. Let's, let's talk about depression before we talk about obsession or, de, or uh, possession. Okay. Here it says, somebody comes to you and they say, have a nice day. But what if you're not happy? What does Islam say about that? What if you really feel sad? Okay. Let's, let's take a letter from one of our sisters. And she said, today is Eid. That was a celebration we had after Ramadan. She said, we're supposed to be happy. But something happened, an altercation within her family this morning. And she said, I, I felt lost and heartbroken. She says, a couple of things went awry. To top it off, I couldn't stop weeping. She said, I remember the ayah, the verse in the Quran, so I performed nafil salat, the prayers, and it was a comfort. She said it was such a comfort that all of her anger, bitterness, resentment at people that hurt her, all of it went away. It just went away. She said, I realized afterward how important it was. Patience became easier. Happiness came back when I was prostrating to Allah, glorifying Him, and remembering again that this is my purpose in life. And at that moment, I'm fulfilling my purpose, and all the worldly problems just become secondary. After this, they stop seeming so bad. Hope increases. You really feel Allah's love and comfort comes from Him, from a sad sister in Islam. Well, I think she's a sad sister that became a glad sister, and that's not too bad to be glad after you're sad. Don't get mad. I'll stop. <laughs> but here's some advice from me. Here's my advice to all of us, myself including, of course, from Islam. Take a look. Think about a nice, quiet, beautiful place. Flowers, birds chirping, children laughing. Close your eyes. See the sparkle of the sun dancing on the waters near the edge of the small pond. Listen to your heart and know it's beating for Allah because Allah gave you this heart. He also gave you life. He gave you a heart, a brain, eyes, ears, and most of all, he gave you understanding. He gave you aqal. It's all going to be over soon enough. So why? Why get worried? Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're gonna, on that day, we're going to be saying, what? Well, life was too short. Now, let's take a look at something else here. Did you know our prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, he was a normal human being. He wasn't a god, a demigod, a son of a god. He was a human. He was perfect in many ways. He also went through some of the same things you and I face today. Did you know Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, at times also suffered with pains and aches just like we do? He felt sad and depressed sometimes. What did he do? How did he handle it? He taught us what to do, and this really helps if we do it. Here's one formula. These 15 points, we'll go over them real quick. Number one, now keep in mind, you're feeling down, you're feeling depressed. Let's take a look. Make wudu. Go to the bathroom, clean yourself for your prayers. Wash your hands, wash your face and mouth. Wash your arms up to the elbow, right hand first, and then the left hand. Then 
over the top of your head and your ears, then your feet, and then put on something nice, a little bit of smell good fragrance, and face the direction toward Mecca. Say Allahu Akbar. Put your hands over your chest, right hand over the left. Begin your words in your salah like this. You're looking for what? You're looking for guidance. And what you need to say is Adina Saratul Mustaqim. That's what you need. Adina Saratul Mustaqim. Even if you don't know Arabic, maybe you're not a Muslim, but just follow these steps. Say, guide us or guide me. Trust me. Many non-Muslims have done this, and it has helped them so much. I'm one of them. Before I was a Muslim, I said, guide me. With my head on the ground, I wasn't even a Muslim. And I'm the happiest camper ever was. <laughs> Best day of my life. When I put my head down on the ground, and I said, God, guide me. And I sure wasn't looking for no new religion. I wasn't looking to learn Arabic language. I wasn't thinking about being a Muslim. I just was thinking about getting close to God. I wanted God to guide me. What do you want me to do in this life? Your will be done, not my will. That was what I was saying. And guess what? <laughs> this is his will. I didn't think of it. Alhamdulillah. But it worked for me. So then, after you ask God to guide you, guide you to the straight path, think of this. The path of those who have the big favor of Allah. That's what you want, the paradise, right? Ask God for that. Guide me to that, that way. Then, not the path of the people that have the wrath. I don't want the wrath path. I'm sorry, I'll stop with the rhymes. I'm sorry. You just don't want Allah's anger on you, right? No, you do want to be wandering around lost. And okay, so that's what you're saying. Then continue to the end and remember every time you pray, stop for a second and think what you are saying. Also, know the meaning of the words from Arabic. If you're Muslim and you're learning Quran, be sure you don't go any further than the knowledge. Don't just recite, you know, like, That's nothing. Know the meaning. So when you say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, he is the all-merciful, ar-Rahim, especially merciful. Alhamd, the praise, dulillah, to Almighty Allah. Rabbil alameen, the Lord of the worlds. Step by step, take your time. What's your rush? You don't get any points for winning any race around here, okay? Take your time, find out the meaning. If you do it, oh, well, you can never uh, compare the satisfaction. Some of the things for the Muslims, now I'm going to shift gears a little bit, that sometimes our women cannot offer the salah, you know, because it's her time of the month, etc. But that doesn't mean that you can't make your other kinds of connection with Allah, because you can always think of Allah in the best way. You can always say, SubhanAllah, Walhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah, Allahu Akbar. Any combination of those words, you can do that. Ya Rabbi, oh my Lord. Ya Rabb, Anta Salam, you're the peace. Wa Minka Salam, and from you comes the peace. Wa Dhul Jalali Wa Al-Ikram. And this combines glory and beauty, for there's an awesome glory and beauty of the Almighty and his generosity, his akram, his ikram. La ilaha illallah. And then think about, and this is from the Quran, who is Allah? Allahu la ilaha illahu. He's the one beside whom there's no partners and nobody to worship but him. Oh. And then think about what Allah tells us about his isma al-husna, his beautiful, wonderful names. And he tells us about that in the Quran, in Surah Al-Araf, chapter 7, verse 80. And then, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa, al-isma al-husna. That's in chapter 20, verse 7. Allah, there's no God except him, and his are the most beautiful of all names. And then, in Surah Al-Hashr, he says, 
huwallahu al-khaliq al-bari al-musawir al-lahu al-isma al-husna. He is the, uh, he is Allah, the creator, the shaper or evolver, out of nothing, the fashioner. His are the most beautiful names. Repeat his names. Learn his names. This can help you. Oh my God, you can't imagine if you've never known Allah had these excellent, perfect characteristics. He's the epitome of every single one of his characteristics. And once you understand that, you have reached a beautiful place in your life. Because when you call upon Almighty God, Almighty Allah, the Rabb al Alameen, the Lord of the Worlds, when you call upon him by these characteristics, you're going to be amazed. If you, for instance, you said, Rabbi, it means my Lord. Ya Rabbi, oh my Lord. Then call upon him by the attribute of his that will cause you to really think, hmm, I want something in this life. I need in my substance, I need my sustenance in this life. Where can I get something to sustain me, okay? Allah is the sustainer, the provider. He's the source of all provision. And that name is Razak. He is Rizak. He is al Rizak. So you say, Ya Rizak. Yeah, Rizak. And then tell him what you want. Because he's the provider. And if you said, well, I have a disease, it's incurable. Don't say that. Don't say that. Because Allah can cure anything. Or he can let it stay. That's up to him. But don't say that he can't cure it. Think of it like this. Allah is the one that allowed me to be in my situation, and he's the only one who can get me out of it. Because if he doesn't want you out of the situation, tell me who can get you out of it. Ask Almighty God for what you need. That's the answer. And that will help you with any kind of depression. We're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to come back, and that's when I want you guys to call in and tell me your questions related to this topic, if you can. But if not, tell us, and we'll see how we can find answers for you here on Just Ask Islam. Stay right there. <laughs> We'd all like to have the reward of someone entering into Islam. But we can't always be there. You can't always travel around with me. And I wish you could. But there is something you can do. And it travels around with you. That's to download the apps. And then you can support your favorite project. Yes, we do have the many websites. Over 2,400. We have the free Quran and the CDs, the mail-outs of the Quran and the CDs. Also, the pamphlets and, of course, our internet website and our satellite television and now the antennas. All of these things are available. We're making it free for everybody, and you can help me do that. You can support. You can support this project. It's called Donate for Islam. That's the name of it. And you can go to that website right there. See it? Donateforislam.com. Support. Maybe you'd like to support the television channel. See the camera right there, right? Okay. So you'd click on that. And it will ex tell you how you can support by the minute. Whether it's an hour, half an hour, 15 minutes. Support that. And you'll get the reward for all those who are watching it during that time. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of people watching our programs, watching our channel, and coming to Islam. And you can be part of it. Join me, won't you, on DonateForIslam.com. Yeah. 
يا حامل القرآن قد خصك الرحمن بالفضل والتجان الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم Praise be to Almighty God and may the peace and blessings be upon our last and final messenger, Almighty God has sent him, Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a warner and a bearer of glad tidings. Bashirin wanadirum. Hello, Akbar. I'm like you. I'm a normal person. I have my ups and I have my downs, seriously. And when you're in broadcasting, and when you're in the news business, ah, and when you're in the dawah business, forget about it. You can go crazy. Truly. And you said, well, you don't understand. You don't have kids. You're right. I don't have any kids. And, not, and I don't mean that from the joke point of saying I don't have any baby goats, because actually kids are baby goats. But I don't have any children. I don't. They all grew up on me. They became adults. Oh, and some of them had children, and they grew up and became adults. And some of them had children, and that's why I consider myself pretty great and pretty grand, because I'm a great grandfather. <laughs> we want to take some questions right now. 1 800 651 4814. Call in right now, and let's take your call and see what we can do to help folks. We have anybody in the chat room. We'll start in the chat room. because Let's take a look at the chat room, a close-up on that. Let's see what we got. And we've got Tamer. Tamer is, uh, I forgot where, 41.41.44. Is that, that's in the UK, I think. And uh, Kalino in the US, Mustafa in the US. Musa, he said he was going to go praise in the UK. Mohammed doesn't tell me where he is. Hamadi is in Canada. Dafi is in Indonesia. Aisha, United States. I think she's maybe gone to pray or something. Uh, hey, we got a call coming in. Let's take the call. Salam alaikum, caller. I forgot to turn my phone back up. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, caller. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I got my phone on the wrong side of my whole deal here. Hold on a second. Let's let's move everything around. Okay, there we go. Go ahead. My question is, when will Muslims stop advising Allah what to do? I think that's a rhetorical question. I don't know the date on that one any more than you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good question. Thank you, brother. Do you have a serious question that we, we could deal with? Something that I might know the answer to? <laughs> because I think that, uh, pe uh, that people, when they pray, they are advising uh, Allah what to do. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand your question, but... You know, if we said, Allah, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, it, that's not out of Islam to do that, brother. Um, because Allah, he's still going to do what he wants to do anyway. But if you try to get on the same page, if you, if you understand what I'm saying, you know that, like, for instance, you see water is coming and there's a big place where it's going to drop off. You know the water is going to fall. That's the, way, that's the way it goes, right? It's not going to go up. And so we also, human beings, we need to kind of look around and see what's happening around us and not ask a lot to do something that's very illogical or not, not really, I mean, he could do what he wants to do. He can make the water go up. Don't get me wrong. But the point is that we try to get our lives in line with the circumstance that he gives us. Does that make sense or no? Well, uh, my biggest concern is I think... No, I'm, that wait, I wait, 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 that was a yes or no question. I was, wait, yeah. Did I make sense in what I was saying or no? Somewhat sense, but not the whole sense. I, I, I will tell you what. Okay, then what I want you to do, I want you to wait until we have a real scholar on and ask them, because I, if I'm not doing a good job here, I want you to ask it to somebody can give you a better answer, okay? Uh, because... Okay. My question is, is Allah influenceable? Can he be influenced? 
Uh, brother, if you're asking, does the law need us to give him guidance? I don't think so. <laughs> that, that doesn't make any sense. But if you, if you want to know more about what Allah does and what he doesn't do for real, there's a website that we built just for that purpose called GodAllah.com, and it really will give you the answers right there. G-O-D-A-L-L-A-H.com. It really is a good website to find these answers. But as far as what we should do when we ask Allah, it is not wrong for you to ask Allah for the things that you want in your life. But it doesn't mean you're going to get them. But it means that you're asking from your sincere side. And if you said, I want Allah to uh, destroy my enemies, maybe he will, maybe he won't. But there are some things that he might guide you to to learn about. For instance, there's a famous hadith where Allah tells us what he will do to the enemies of somebody who's close to him. So the object of that hadith is to teach us to try to get closer to Almighty God then we will not be doing the things that displease him, and then he will keep us away from our enemies. Does that make sense? Maybe. Uh, I'm not doing any good, so I'm, not, I'm going to stop right there, brother, because if I'm not giving you yes or no uh, understandings, then you need to talk to somebody that's got a lot more smarts than me on the subject. So I apologize for that, but I'm not the sheikh, okay? Zakalah here for your call. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. And I wish we have uh, maybe better <laughs> answers for you. It says here, this is not charged up. I better keep it on. The, I was going to unplug it. But OK, guys, I know some of you, quite a few of you were calling. And let me ask the, uh, the, our, our chat room if they have any questions. It says, according to you, how about Sholato Jama? for man. Shulat the Jama. I have no clue. According to me, I don't know what you're talking about. Next question. Okay, we got somebody on the phone. Let's take that. I'm not doing too good tonight. Let me see if I can do any better. So I'm like home caller. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from uh, Columbus. Oh, okay. Do you have a question for us tonight? Yeah, I have a question for you. Um, uh, Go ahead. Muslim lady, I work at a place, and um, I was just asking you about uh, if if they if they request me to take the individual. I work at a home health care facility, and on Sundays they request me to take people to the church. Is it allowed in Islam if I'm not going in the church? There's the question. Them? Okay, and we don't have any sheikh or a scholar here, so you know you're asking me. So I, here I go. Ready? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulullah. When we have a question, we should go back. I'm going to show our friends online, too. Go back to search for Islam, and let's see what we got about church. And... Um, uh -huh. And uh, the prophetic tradition, which is hadith, and let's see what we can find. All right, that sounds like a good idea. It says uh, the church. Okay, let's go, and that takes us to just ask Islam. It says pictures, halal or haram. People of Moses in his absence uh, is talking about, uh, and there's a lot of hadith right here. Okay, this particular one okay. has given us a lot of hadith, even about the church pictures and so on. What we have from the scholars, bottom line, if you want to read the whole article, it's telling us that the Jews and Christians are believers. That's in the Quran itself, all right? And we can find that. We'll find that by going to uh, back to uh, Search for Islam and... We want to know about Jews, Christians, and believers, and that'll probably bring us exactly what we want. And what we find, and I'll just jump, I'm going to take a shortcut up here. Allahsquran.com, we'll click on read. We want to read it, chapter 3. Okay, now... Listen to what it says about the Jews and Christians, the people of the book, Ahl Kitab. You know Ahl Kitab, right? Yes, I know, yeah. All right. Here's what we have about the Ahl Kitab. 
ولاو امانا اهل كتاب الله خان خير لهم من هم المؤمنون واكثرهم الفاسقون if the people of the bible had believed it would be better for them among them are believers but most of them are defiantly disobedient it okay. goes on yeah i want to tell you what it says down here it says laysa sawan min ahl kitabi all of the people of the book are not the same they're not the same it says it says that some of them are standing meaning they stand in obedience like standing for prayer and they recite verses of allah during the night and they prostrate to allah it means even the book that they have which is the bible which is translated which is not even authentic because it's not the original like we have with quran but yet they have something there that is giving them the inspiration to pray directly to god and there are verses like that in the bible and it says they believe in the law you mean it says you mean no billahi wal yawmul akhir they believe in the law on the last day wa yamuruna bil maruf wa tanha wa yanhana anhil munkar and they enjoin what's right and they forbid what's wrong and they hurry to do good deeds so it tells us that some of these people are righteous and it's not for us to decide who is and who isn't so that's that's i want to show you the, what the quran says now from the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we know that he said that he will be against any of us who were taking away the rights of the jews and christians he said that on the day of judgment he'll be against us if we take away their rights and taking them yeah. to church taking them to a place to worship as long as you don't go in and worship with them that would be your problem then but at taking them to a place to worship what's the problem if somebody said would you take them to the grocery store you'd take them to the grocery store right yes yeah take oh. them to the hospital we take them no, to the hospital yeah, but wait a minute let's just stay with one thing at a time okay you take them to a grocery store did the grocery store sell alcohol yes does the grocery store have gambling where they can buy those little things and rub and scratch and play with them and all that yes Does a grocery store have pornography half naked women in it? Yes. Then you take them there but you don't want to take them to church? <laughs> That's my point. I hope we answered your question. I hope we answered your question. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. I'm sorry to suggest your name again. My name is Yusuf. Yes. Okay. Nice to talk to you. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate your answer, and I'm very, very happy. Well, I'm not the scholar around here, but I, I do like to learn and share with everybody what, whatever we find out. Thank you, sister. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Inshallah. Guidance TV. I love you all. Okay. Thank you very much. Love it. Salam alaikum. That's nice. She loves Guidance TV. I like the way she says that. <laughs> Now let's come back to our chat room and see if we have anybody that came up with an, a question. Did we, while I was away, we have our monitor. We have Danish online with Danish. Salam alaikum and Sister Chantel. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Can maybe if somebody can see it better. I don't know if this will work or not. Will that work? No, it doesn't work in here. Huh? Well, that's okay. Whoops! What did I do? Up. I hit something. I got kicked out. I kicked myself out of my own chat room. That's pretty cool. Let's see what we can do to get back in again. Okay. Hey, we're back. There we are. Now we're back. Welcome to our chat room dedicated to presenting true Islam in simple simple English. There we go. I love to put that on there cuz I want people to know what's the purpose behind what we're doing here. 
Now, did we have Chantel or Danish, either one of you, do you have any questions that came up while I was uh, l looking at the other websites? I, I wasn't actually in the chat room myself. Do you have any questions? I'd, I'd, we've got 11 people here. It's not a whole lot, but anybody's welcome anytime to come to our chat room. If this works out, we're going to do it again tomorrow night, by the way, because we only got about nine minutes left in our program, something like that. So, yeah. And, uh, okay, one of our brothers just got back from his salah. May Allah accept to Kaba Allah. Allah accept from you and us and all of us. MashaAllah. Welcome back. And, hmm. Somebody's saying, uh, okay, it's about depression. I'll read it to you guys. It says, he said, Salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam, Hamadi. You have a friend that dealt, you dealt with trying to convince people not to succumb to suicide and fight depression. And it made you reflect on many others who deal with sad depression. Unfortunately, they don't know how to carry on in their lives. So the question, okay. If my friend faces the same situation, how should I approach him or her in an Islamic way to help him or her the purpose behind our life? Thanks. Okay. Let us do that right now. you got a good question. I'm going to post the, the link here on, on the uh, chat room. I, the, my mistake was that I went to the wrong place, okay? I should have posted the links here so you guys could see what we were doing. Now that's it, search for Islam. Now I opened it up. Now here on search for Islam, I'm gonna type in a keyword, okay? And it's called purpose. That was my question, right? Purpose of life. Well, you can put purpose of life, but purpose is sufficient. And it will come up purpose of life. And this is what you should tell people because this is from Islam, the purpose of life. What does Islam say about life's purpose? Have you ever asked yourself these questions? What is the purpose of life? My life, your life, any life. So this article is not that long. It's not that long. It won't take you more than five minutes, maybe eight minutes to read the whole thing. But you will m be amazed at how simple and beautiful it is to know what's the meaning of this life. That's one way you can find out. But there's another way. And this one is, and I'm going to change it back here. I'm going to say, uh, uh, why were we created? For what purpose? How about that? It says, I put in why was it created, and it took me to Q-Tafsir, another of our websites, and it takes me right to this in Arabic. A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajeem. Allah says, Wa ma khalaqna al-samawati wal-arda wa ma baynahuma il bil haqqi wa in sa'ata la the, uh, the Kesra and the Fatah are right over each other. I think that's T. Uh, yeah, it has to be, yeah. Allah said, we did not create the heavens and the earth, and all it is between them, except with truth, and the hour is surely coming. Now, you have to understand from this, Allah is telling you the purpose. He's telling you there is a purpose here. It's not a joke. He's not playing around. And when he says this, he's letting us know that is what those who disbelieve think. So don't fall into that trap. Don't think that this is for no purpose because then you become amongst the disbelievers. Then let those who disbelieve be warned of the nar, the fire. Okay? I'm going to just give translation. We're running out of time. It says, do you think that Allah created you to play and that you would not be brought back to him? 
So exalted be Allah, the truth, the king. None has the right to be worshipped but he, Lord of the honored throne. Then Allah informed Prophet about the hour and that it will be the faults of the idolaters when they insult him and reject the message that he warns them about. This is like the ayah, and this is another ayah from Quran. So turn away from them and say, Salaam, peace. But they will come to know. This is chapter 43, verse 89. It is uh, 43. We had it last night. Some of the scholars say this was before the fighting was prescribed, before the Muslims were allowed to even counter the attacks coming against them. So, subhanAllah, there's a lot here. And that, that's what I recommend. I recommend to all of us to take time to search, search for Islam. You want to know something? This is what you do. Okay? Back to the subject of depression. And let's put the depression back up. And we're going to go out with that. We're almost out of time. So I'll put depression back up here. How Islam deals with depression. And this is what we started with. I want to end with it. I'm going to ask everybody, when you go to Islam Newsroom, please rate. I don't care if you rate good or bad. That's up to you. I hope we did good. But do rate them, and it helps us to know what your interests are. All right? Happiness comes in cans. Mm. Happiness comes in cans, not cans. And there is a difference between success and happiness. Success is getting what you want. Happiness is wanting what you get. Remember that. Let me say that again. Success is getting what you want. Happiness is wanting what you get. Because Allah will give you things that you may think, well, that's not what I wanted. But if you can be happy with it, if you can be pleased with that, if you can say, this is what I want because Allah wants it for me, you'll be happy. Mm. You'll be successful. And you'll be far away from depression. Let's remember that. Happiness comes in cans. Say, I can. Allah can. It can happen. There's always a way. There's always a way for those who are asking Allah, Adina, Sirat al-Mustaqeen, guide us to the straight way, the Sirat, the Tariq, the Tariq of Islam. And I pray and I ask Allah that he'll guide all of us and bring us back again for his sake real soon. I'm going to go back to the chat room right now. And uh, so somebody said they don't have an audio, but uh, I, think, I think we do have audio. I'm pretty sure we do. And if anybody would like to be with us again tomorrow night, we're going to try to set this up even better for tomorrow night. So if any of you would like to do that, Come be with us in the chat room. Tell your friends about the chat room. You can go to chatislam.com. And we have monitors, moderators there all the time. We have scholars who come in and do, real scholars come in and give real programs. And we invite you to visit and be with us for that. Inshallah ta'ala. And meet and greet with our moderators and monitors who are helping us all the time. Sister Chantel, mm -hmm. Brother Danish. They're there to help. And there are many regulars who come in as well. So we encourage you to join along with us, be with us in the chat room and here on our live programs on Guidance TV. I want you to also know how you can help support the work that we're doing. Just real briefly, I'll tell you, donate to Islam.com. I want to go out with that and tell you this is how we send out all the free Qurans. This is how we keep the websites going. And this is how we keep the channel going. It's called DonateToIslam.com. Check it out and see what you'd like to do. Until next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum.